Hi guys, I'm going to go through how to set up the IP address with BootP on a Micrologix 1100. Uh, we just got a lot of these in from Shadler Esco through a grant from uh, Mike Barron. So a lot of the freshmen are going to be using these. Um, they have Ethernet connection and they have a serial connection. The serial is all set up by default, so you can use that right out of the box. This is brand new, fresh out of the box. Um, the Ethernet connection, the Ethernet IP, um, you can't set up the RS Lynx driver to connect to it over Ethernet until there's an Ethernet IP address in the processor. So you can connect to it over serial, which I show how to do that in another video. You can connect to it over serial and go into the processor and set the IP address, or you can use boot P. That's the other option. So right now it's fresh out of the box. I have power connected to it, and I have an Ethernet cable connected from the Ethernet port on the Micrologix 1100 to the Ethernet port on my laptop. And then I'm going to open, this is a, a school laptop, so you'll have all this software. So you're going to come in here, you're going to look for boot P. There it is. And it's part of the Rockwell software package. So it's asking me, select network interface. Um, so obviously it's not Bluetooth. I'm on a school laptop, so there's lots of interfaces. Um, this one is a wireless adapter. These last two are virtual um, adapters. So the only one that's actually... Uh, there's only two that have an IP address. You know it's one of the ones with an IP address, and this bottom one is a wireless. So we know it's got to be this one for the hardwired Ethernet, right? Uh, 192.168.2.3. That'll be convenient to remember, because if, if you remember earlier, the first three octets, so the 192.168.2, has to be the same in the processor as it is on my laptop for me to be able to connect. So if I set the processor with these same first three, then I'll be able to connect right off the bat, and I won't have to change anything on my laptop. So 192.168.2. We'll try to remember that. Yes, I want to allow boot P to do everything. Now it's taken a while. There you go. Please configure network settings before using Ethernet IP Commissioner. Network setup error. Great. Um, 2.3, Gateway, so that all looks right. So this is um, my IP address up top. Subnet mask, 99% of the time, is going to be the same thing, 255, 255, 255, That just means the first three sets of numbers have to match on my laptop and my processor, and then the last one can be anything. So all this looks pretty good. All right. Um, now I should start seeing this fill in on the top with requests. Sometimes it takes a little while, so we, we will wait. Well, maybe I'll clear history so we can see if we get any new ones. So because that's a brand new processor out of the box, it should be in, uh, configured to run boot P immediately when the power comes on to it. So we just have to wait until we see a new uh, broadcast over the Ethernet from this processor. There's one. So sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes you, you wait a minute or two. So this is the only thing I literally have connected to this computer at all over my hardwired Ethernet. So I know that this is the right MAC address. If you're connected to a network switch or you're on a, a large network, you could have multiple things broadcasting boot P requests. So you want to figure out what your MAC address is. If you look at the screen on the front of the, Ether, of the 1100 Micrologix, you can scroll through the settings and see what the MAC address is. So the MAC address is going to be specific for every piece of hardware. Um, like I ordered like 13 of these Micrologix 1100s. Every single one is going to have its own unique MAC address. Everything that's created has a, a unique MAC address. Um, so you can go through the settings on the screen on the front and make sure that this is the right thing sending requests. Otherwise, you could be assigning an IP address to something else on your network and you don't even know what it is that you're changing the IP on or setting the IP, I should say. If there's already an IP address in something, it's not going to broadcast these boot P requests. This is just a piece of hardware, so now I have three of them. Um, the old system, it used to just keep filling in and filling in and filling in. Look, this one looks like it's just uh, upping this number. So now I've received four requests from the processor. So I want to add a relation. And what do I do here? Try set that to five. Wait, that's not what I want to do. Client IP address. There we go. So I'm the server, so the top one is my IP address. This is going to be what I'm setting this MAC address right here. 
is my piece of hardware, which is the 1100. You can see that MAC address matches, and it's going to be the client. I'm going to be the boot key server, and the Micrologix 1100 is going to be the client. So I'm going to change it to 192, 168, 2, because that's what my computer is right now, and change this to like 10, anything other than 3 because this is what I'm setting the 1100 to. If I set it to the exact same IP as my pro, as my laptop, um, the packets will collide. So I'll be sending and receiving from the exact same IP address and that won't work. Um, I shouldn't need a host name or a description. Okay, so now down here it says ethernet address. This MAC address is set to this IP address, which looks good. Um, now I should be able to go into RS links and set up an ethernet driver and see it. The reason I wouldn't be able to do that earlier is that there is no, there was no Ethernet address in the processor for me to see. Um, I want to go to here for a new connection, and I want to set up an Ethernet IP driver, and that's just the default name for the first driver I'm going to have. And here again, it wants me to um, select which uh, adapter I'm going to use. So we know it's going to be this one in my case. Sometimes you'll have lots of op lots of options, and some computers have more than one hardwired Ethernet port, too. Um, but I know it's this one, because this is the IP that we've been using, and it's the only hardwired one on here. So now that driver is running. Where are we at? It's the middle one. Um, AB, so that's Alan Bradley, Ethernet IP, um, driver number one, and then AB Ethernet, and it says it's running. There's no conflicts. So we'll close this. And here is that driver we just created, and there is my MicroLogic processor popped up. So now we can see it. Now I want to go into it and turn off boot P. I can remember. And you can look at some of the other specs to make sure you're connecting to the right thing because you might have other stuff on your network. I can remember uh, where I want to go here. Is it configure driver? So you can go in here in RS Links and uh, turn off the boot P, which is what I'm trying to do right now. Because if I don't, when I cycle power on this processor, it's going to, uh, I thought it was device properties. Well, anyway, now that I have a driver, Ethernet driver, I know there is a way to go into it through RS Links. I don't usually do that, though. Um, now that I have a, the IP address in the processor and I have a... Uh, driver setup, I can open up uh, RS Micro, and close this, huh, maybe I don't want to save it, I know it's already in the processor right now, so I just hit no, hopefully my phone just keeps beeping obnoxiously the whole time I'm trying to record this, RS Micro, oh you know what, I don't have a micro on this school laptop, but I do have 500, so I can open that up. who active. So this is just going to bring up a list of all my drivers that I have set up in RS Links. Here's my Ethernet IP one. And here's that Micrologix. Hit OK. So it's a completely blank uh, processor. There's nothing in it. And you can see how fast this thing spins when you're on Ethernet. It's because uh, Ethernet protocol is way faster transfer of data so everything goes real quick. I'm going to go to channel configuration. So channel 0 on these is the serial, and channel 1 is the Ethernet. And I'm going to turn off boot P enable. And I'm going to turn off, I guess I can leave that on, auto negotiate. Every, all the rest of this looks good. Hit apply. And it says, warning, you may lose your current communication because you're communicating it over the, e over the Ethernet and you're changing settings in the Ethernet um, configuration. So if you change like the IP address, for instance, all of a sudden you completely lose connection because the IP address on that processor wouldn't be um, the same one that your um, laptop, the first three octets of your laptop wouldn't be the same. So now I should be able to reboot this processor and it should come back up with the Ethernet address still in it, hopefully. Uh, 
All right. I just unplugged it, waited for it to die down, and plugged it back in. It's booting up as we speak. It says communication loss. Now that it's up, I'm just going to try the short way. Okay, that was easy. Right back online. Um, so I know it saved my IP address, and also links would have lost the connection when the power was down to it, and if it didn't come back up, it would have a red X on it. I can show you what that looks like, too. Um, so when I unplug it, you'll see the red X on RS links will pop up here in a second once the power dies out. There it goes. So now we lost connection with the processor because there's no power to it. Um, had my boot P, had my turning off the boot P not actually turned off the boot P, like I didn't have a proper connection or something like that, anytime you'd power this up, um, the boot P would start broadcasting requests to have an IP set for this processor. Um, but it obviously saved all my settings because in a second here, now that I powered it back up, there we go, the red X went away, so now we're back connected to it again. So I know my IP is in there. It shows my IP right here. And there we go. My RSLINX driver is communicating with it. All my IPs are set right. I'm good to go. Now from now on, it will always have that IP address in it. I won't ever have to set it again. And you're going to want to write it down either in the cabinet that this processor is in or on the side of the processor or put a sticker on it or something because if it's not on a network and it's a freestanding processor, um, you need some... You need to let everybody else know in the future what IP is set in it. These Micrologix 1100s are nice because you can scroll through the screen on the front and find the IP address in it, but other stuff like the 1000s and there's other models where it doesn't display what the IP address is, you just have to know. So you have to write it down somewhere or put it on a sticker because it might be five years before somebody connects this. Again, you didn't even work there anymore and like nobody has any clue what the IP is. So then you have to go in through serial and look at the configuration. So if you go into through serial to try to find the IP address. You go to um, channel configuration and go in these, and for these you go to channel one, but it could be a different channel depending on your processor. And then you can just read the IP address out of here. If there's no IP address in here, then you have to set it over a serial communication or you have to set it over boot P. And then you have to turn boot P off if boot P was on. And that's right down here. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you.